Alrighty guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. In the last video, we went over part one of how to win more fights in Fortnite. A lot of the key fighting fundamentals, so if you haven't seen it yet, go ahead and check that out. That will be a big help for you guys. In this one, we're going to be looking at how to win fights when you're the one being aggressed, other players are pushing you, either you're weak or they're just a really aggressive player. Now, if possible, if you're in a good position to do so, I always suggest trying to fight for high ground, even if it's only for a few seconds. Could be something as simple as building a few ramps up. We kind of talked about this in the last video, but if you are forced to give it up, either you're weak or you don't have a ton of material or there's other players around looking for you, then we're going to go over how to play from low ground. So the first thing you want to do, obviously, is box up, but you don't want to be in a single box here in case you're getting pushed. Someone's on your wall, they're smacking. You know, you can go for your edits. You can go for peace, um, something like that. So let's say someone's aggressing into your box right here. You could always edit up, and if you have other space already made, you have a free edit down. You could go for counter damage on them, and then reset, pop your heals, and whatever. And you can always go for pre-fires. Pre-fires are going to be huge, but you always want to have extra space to play out of in case you go for pre-fire, you know, you miss, or even if you hit them for 100, but they jump in and then you're spraying you and you're already weak and you're dead. So if someone is just spraying your wall, hold your cone up or hold a ramp and then you can go for pre-fire or a quick pump shot, edit out the side and then you gotta hold this wall. You can go for another pre-fire window edits, um, all of that. That is how I would do counter damage. I would suggest making as much space as possible um, it makes it a lot harder for your opponent to track you and it gives you lots of time to get heals off and play better angles. Now let's say this isn't working, they're playing good angles and stuff and they're trying to get pre-piece on you. One thing you can always do is pre-box from inside your box. That way the other opponent, if they do happen to get your tops on you, you know, you're not even in this box, they look, you're not in that box, you can drop down, go somewhere else. Um, but if you do get this box pieced up and it's all yours, then you can play from this box. You can play back an angle and then, you know, go for edits from a peanut butter. So that's how I would pre-box if you're in a really scuffed situation. If you are just getting shot at and the enemy's a little bit further from you, you will have a little bit more time to make some space. So the way I would do that is cones out first, create a lot of space this way and then you can go around and try to close off those areas and fill in the, some of the inner walls. This also lets you go and have a lot more space really quickly other than, you know, playing from one box, fighting out of this box, going back, trying to build another one, and then, you know, oh, he got my wall, going back one more, you know, playing from this box now. That's great, but the issue is when you're in one box, you're a lot more predictable, you're a lot easier to track and fight, you know, so your opponent is going to have a much easier time fighting you and going for things like pre-piece on you. Um, so if you have multiple boxes to play out of, it just makes it a lot harder for your opponent to keep up with you. And, you know, they're going to be over here. Now they're going over here trying to take this. And it just makes it a lot harder for them to get you. All right. So the next thing we're going to go into is how to beat bad players and how to predict your opponents. Now, I will be honest, half of this comes down to game sense and just playing the game and being able to understand what a player is likely to do in a certain situation. But there are certain things you can also do to help track them. Number one, obviously, you want to have visual sound effects on for obvious reasons. This will just always let you know where an enemy is in relation to you. And that is one of the biggest things when you're trying to track and predict your opponent. Now let's say little Timmy is boxed up in here, you're trying to fight him, he doesn't look that good, maybe it's in a cash cup or something. If you see someone that's not that good, you still have to take them seriously, even if they aren't that good. So again, like we talked about in our last video, play off your right hand peaks. You can go off of a ramp, you can even go off of a wall right here, wall off the cone in case they decide to edit out at you. You can have a floor right here so they can't pre-piece that, um, and you can play from down here. Just go from edits like this, if they edit the cone, you know, try to get a ramp in there, you can edit it sideways. And now they're in a really bad situation and you have a really, really good peak here. From their situation, they can't even really see you. If they're in here, they're getting blocked by the cone. If they're up here, they can see you. 
but they have really nowhere to go. And you can just quickly, you know, place a wall here, pump them, and back off. Playing again, still playing off of your right hand. So that's number one is take them seriously and play good angles. A lot of times people will see someone really bad and have them super weak, or they're just gonna stand right on their wall, pickaxe, they get pre-fired, they take a wide open edit, and you get hit really hard, and then a third party comes and yes you got the first kill but the third party cleans you up because you took so much damage fighting a player that shouldn't have really done any damage to you you also want to make sure you're patient fighting those players you don't have to jump in their box just because they're bad a lot of the times a bad player might be bad at things like building and editing but they can turn around and do a ton of damage so you really don't want to take a 50 50 especially a lot of times you're going for their wall you get a wall you make an edit and what does the other player do they just run at you, come out, and they start thinking every single headshot. Have layers of protection between you and the other player. If you're going for wall, you know, play off of it like this. Go for this, reset, and then you can go for a window edit. If they run at you, you have your cones. You can play out of other boxes. Reset, window, pump them like that. So have multiple layers between you and the other player when you're pressuring them, especially if they look like the type of player that's just going to run at you. Let's say, you know, someone's sitting under this cone, you don't have a wall here, and they can either go for a pre-fire or just run at you. But if you do have a wall here, you know, you're going like this, you can reset really quickly, or you can even have do something like this where you got a door, you, you know, you're playing through this, playing piece through that, and etc. All right, so those are the last couple starter tips I had for today's video that I didn't quite get to in the other video. If you want more detailed explanations of things, I'll be making more videos on these shortly. And of course, leave comments down below. Let me know what you need help with, and I will do my best to answer them. Or if it's a more detailed thing, I will make another video on it. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day. Feel free to like and subscribe if you enjoy this type of content, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.